All right, guys, in the incredible Airy Surratt room. Lots to go over, but right now I just want to cover certain things with this amazing Aurora speaker, which I uh, noticed at Expona a, a year ago. And Stavros, who you, frequent subscribers all recognize from our interview. Stavros, I just wanted you to make sure people understood that Airy Surratt Aurora speaker a little more. Can we go walk through some of the things? Starting with the aesthetics, this liquid copper is so amazing, and the liquid uh, car liquid carbon. carbon, yeah, that's amazing. Can you talk about that real quick? Uh, so this is uh, our, our mid-range horn, it covers from 2.8 hertz up to 3K, so it's uh, quite a range. We avoid to cross over at about 500, which and above, which most, most horns do, so you avoid uh, so the male fo uh, vocals and female vocals are uh, handled by a single horn. It's pretty important. Uh, it's quite a big horn. It's about 60, uh, 68 centimeters deep. Just it's to fabricate this is not easy. You have that five axis CNC yes, machine, and it's, and it's, huge. Uh, it takes quite a while to even machine because you can machine uh, after a certain depth. So it's actually built on the machine. And this is all done for a reason. Exactly. So the only way to have a diffraction of this horn is if you do a 360 degrees uh, pullback, which we do in our other models, the bigger Condendo and the previous Siphonian. But you can't do that if you have a cube behind. So mm -hmm. the only uh, way uh, to, uh, let's say, to formulate a transition from, a, from let's say, a Tratrix horn to a cube is this geometry here so yeah. it does look fancy but it's the only uh, geometry which mathematically can uh, describe a way to not have diffraction if you and uh, then transition to a cube yeah, exactly. this is brilliant in itself yeah so it's the only way to avoid a diffraction which is one of the main reasons horn sound a bit cutting mm -hmm. you know, this effect on voices especially because you have secondary which you don't have with this at all yeah also, it's uh, stacked plywood, so this is uh, minimum thickness everywhere is more than 10 centimeters from the throat to the mouth, so zero resonance. <laughs> this is uh, liquid copper application, it's about four millimeter thick. You can see that it's actually 3D. Yeah, it's, it, this is the best finish on any speaker in the world. Nobody, I don't think, could do this. It's amazing. And the carbon is equally cool. But the other thing, the brilliance to me, even more so in some respects, is how you did your kind of quasi open baffle base exactly. with, if we can so, come around. Uh, one of the main reasons I started this project was to play around and see what's the best non bass horn uh, base module we can design. So we quickly discarded every, uh, you know, isobaric or closed bus reflex solution. Uh, I was intrigued by open bubble, but what I found is that they lacked dynamics mm -hmm. and uh, low end, mm -hmm. just it's possible to get low end from an open bubble. Uh, so we came with the idea that if you roll back a bubble, so it's- uh, Yeah, let's take a look back here. It's back pressure. Yeah, you got back so pressure from back each. Because you have the restriction here, and this surface is less than the total of the cone area. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you create some back pressure. Also you have uh, very different lowering uh, of the room because you don't have stacked woofer array, which they will be uh, equidistant from a proximity either side That's or right. the yeah. ceiling if you are horizontal, which will create modes and uh, peaks and valves. So what we do is if you have four woofers, which they have very different distances from all proximities, you even out uh, the bus lowering the room. Uh, it creates some, uh, let's say, pleasant side effects, this one. One is that you uh, you avoid these nulls and peaks from the floor and from the mm -hmm. air as well. And also, uh, the four woofers will lack like a, in unison, like a single drive if they are in phase, which they are. So you can regard these uh, four woofers as a single, single point a bus module which is acoustic center to be the center of the cube yeah everything's acoustically centered yeah, exactly. with the so that's imagine amazing that you have 
uh, Pass Mojo, which is a virtual center to be the center of the queue. Now, uh, another uh, benefit to doing that is that if you can t really time align if you place the mid range uh, driver to the woofer's virtual center. So you only don't only have time alignment, you also have point source, which is impossible to do if you have, let's say, a, a coaxial driver, because you have to make an offset either more forward or to the back. So you have a single source, point source, but you don't have time alignment. So the only way to do that, both time alignment and, and point source, is this solution. Yeah, this is incredible. And uh, so, yeah, you have the benefits of almost a swarm subwoofer system, but with you don't have to worry about phasing and put them all different ways. Yes. You're loading the room. Brilliant. And also, we probably need to get to this tweeter. There's a reason for this angle. Exactly. So one of, the, one of the problems in room acoustics is the what we call cross-channel reflection. So it's not just the first reflection of, let's say, the left speaker to the left wall you have reflections from the right speaker to the left wall. So you have both reflections crossing in front of you and to your ears, which uh, ruins all the imaging possibilities of any speaker. So what we try to do is if you angle this and having always in mind that a long ribbon will be very directional on its horizontal axis. So the right. ribbon is very directional on this axis and has very good dispersion on this axis. So if you, if you angle this uh, tweeter this way, it's gonna shoot to the listener, it's gonna shoot to the ceiling, so not to that one. Right. On this direction, it's gonna shoot to the cube and back to the ceiling. Mm. It cannot shoot to that to ceiling side, yeah. because it has a very narrow directivity. Right. Okay, so Brilliant. this tweeter will only point to the listener, will avoid the two walls, mm -hmm. and same thing with this. So that's why if you sit in, in the dead center, you have this holographic imaging, which is uh, it's quite pronounced in this speaker. And one of the big reasons is time alignment. And uh, second reason is exactly this tilting. Yeah, and it's aligned with the drivers here. Exactly. Yeah. So it's pushed back. It looks funny where it is. But yeah, exactly. Uh, Everything's for a purpose. Some time aligned to the mid range. Yeah, so I, would, I just wanted to cover this today, but um, I never like to say best, but this is one of the most brilliant speakers ever made. Certainly my favorite horn I've ever heard. Um, and it's a must audition uh, if you are at the show. So thank you, Stavros, again for going through this. You do have a prototype. This is not really re released yet, right? Yes, this was not announced and it was, uh, you know, and, uh, let's say an underground project. We never okay. announced it before the show. It was kind of a, okay. a surprise for the inner circle of the company which we now reveal at the show. So, so first look at this, yeah. It's called Protos, which is mean, which means uh, first in, uh, in Greek. Okay. And uh, it's gonna be the entry level, uh, if you can use that word, of the Janus range. Okay. So it's the smallest in power, in size, and in uh, position in the lineup. Uh, for the, the Janus range, we, which use the Tridefer technology. So we're pretty excited about this because um, we thought we would not be able to scale it down mm -hmm. to this degree because of uh, the minimum complexity issues of uh, the trial for technology. But uh, I think we were able to do it. And uh, the prototype, which is the prototype, uh, finally made the deadline. So that was also a reason why it was underground. Okay. So it was finished right before the show. and. Uh, we to sounded great with these and uh yes guys this is a scaled down integrated amp in the airy Surratt world this is scaled down unbelievable yeah and it's got the triofet technology so. So, so 20 watt single stage uh single ended it's one stage from the input post to the output post. yeah this is just not another me too um tube amp guys Definitely check out my full interview with Stavros on the channel. And if you're here, come and listen. Uh, it's a must listen to room. All right. Thank you much, Stavros. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.